I have something special by God's grace for each of us. If we can just turn me down just slightly. <clears throat> this, this morning, um, one of the things that we'll be sharing is uh, we've been talking about various things in health. And I'm going to, oops. <clears throat> Will you do me a favor and plug this in for me, please? Um, let me pull out my bag of goodies. <clears throat> that I brought with us today that I want to be able to show you a few things that I think that will be very interesting for our study this morning. The, um, the charge on this side. That's okay. So I have some books here for those who may be interested after I'll refer to them. Um, and this one here is called the Medicinal Encyclopedia of Medicinal Plants. Um, It'll be here. Uh, we're going to be talking about this one. This one here is called Foods and Their Healing Powers. Um, and this one here is an abbreviated portion of that. This is Foods That Heal. Also, um, I have another book here. This one's called Nature's Medicines. Um, the Folklore, Romance, and Value of Herbal Remedies. And then I have another book here that is called Councils to Diets and Foods. And so these are some of the things that we're going to be discussing today. But um, as uh, I have to just make one other adjustment, thank you. I brought some goodies with me. My wife doesn't know. But everybody's going to find out together, including her. But I'm so grateful that she loves me because I raided her kitchen. And so here are some of the goodies that I brought. Now, this one here, anybody in here have any idea what this is? It's grape juice. That is exactly right. That is a very good answer. It is grape juice. And... Um, we're going to be talking about why grape juice and other things like this are so powerful. All right. Now, this one here is a, a baggie of goodies. Now, this one here. Anybody have an idea what this is? What's it look like to you? That, well, I, I know these two ladies know. This is lamb's quarter. That's right. Lamb's quarter tastes a little bit like spinach when you cook it. I'm not going to take it out of the bag because, uh, well, can I take a little bit out? Is it okay? All right. Huh? Okay. So here is a little bit of what we call lamb's quarter. And matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this around. I'll start on this side. You can smell it. You can uh, just take a little, a little look at it. And I recognize that I have not yet prayed, but I'm grateful. I'm just uh, setting up the, the stage, as it were, for the things. And so here's some lamb's quarter that was picked at Sister Meggie's. And it is exceedingly healthful. Very nice. Uh, really delicious. And how much did it cost to grow? Did it cost you anything to grow? You, you, you normally use a weed eater, right? To get rid of it. <laughs> All right. So here's some of that. That's the lamb's quarter that I brought. Now, there are some foods that I brought that... Um, anybody know what this is here? What are these? These are grapefruits. That's exactly right. And I brought a few of those. And I brought some of their cousins. 
Um, and anybody know what these are? Lemons. Okay. Wow. Does anybody know why grapefruit and lemon are so good? Does anybody have any idea? Do we have a microphone um, that we might be able to pass out so I can ask a few questions? Who knows about the grapefruit and the lemon? Anybody? Raise your hand. All right, right here. There's a yellow microphone if you want to get up right here and come and get it. Thank you. Thank you. You can hand it to the nice lady with the, the light blue dress on. Thank you, baby. Thank you so much for bringing that back. Yes. Oh, yeah, just um, when you're done, I'm just saying give it to her. She'll pass it around. A lemon and grapefruit are cleansers, and um, the lemon is your liver's best friend, and you can also use both of those, I think, to um, do a liver flush. Okay. So the and, and I gave a health nugget on the grapefruit earlier. So the lemon, and the you said the lemon is good for your what? microphone liver all right and what did you say the grape grapefruit was good for your liver as well okay all right so I'll pull this one back I brought a few bags of things uh oh looks like oh there it is all right so of course you know what these are everybody in here this is one of our favorites here what are these yes these cherries. are very good does anybody know what cherries are good for Okay, they are. Okay. So I'm going to encourage you after church service to come and to look at these books. Because this book here, as a matter of, will this one do it? There are three volumes of these books. And I'll grab a different one and I'll show you something that it does that's really amazing. What this book does, uh oh, it didn't turn on. There you go. Um, what this book does is it goes through, and the way it's set up is you open it up, and it says chapter 29, foods for the urinary tract. And then it'll have another section here uh, foods for the digestive system, chapter 25. Uh, chapter 21, foods that are good for the heart. It's good to know what foods you're eating affect what parts of your body. Specifically, if you have certain parts of your body that are weak. And so cherries are a fruit. They're very sweet and they're dark in color. So I almost imagine that the foods that match the color match that part of the body that it affects. Sometimes, sometimes, did you know that walnuts, does anybody in here know what walnuts are good for? Go ahead. It's a brain. Go. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so, thank you. Very, but you, I did remember something about the grapefruit. Okay. If you eat two a day, it'll clean out your arteries. Wow, wow. How does it do that? Do you know? It cleanses, it slowly cleanses the plaque. It slowly does a cleansing effect. Now, you can do things that do it faster, but I've known of people that have died because they were taking so much uh, lecithin. Does anybody in here know what lecithin is? Lecithin is very good. It'll cleanse your arteries as well. But some people, they're in such a hurry. They, I want to lose weight fast. I want my arteries to get better fast. But their arteries didn't get bad fast. It took time. And so the two grapefruit a day, because it's not a very sweet fruit, but it's a very, very good for your arteries. The lecithin will do it, but you have to be careful on the amount that you take. All right. There's a couple other things here. Why do you have to be careful? Why do you have to be careful with the lecithin? Because if you take too much, it'll, it'll take uh, parts of your clogged artery and cause it to go through your body. And if it goes to your lungs, that chunk... You'll have a pulmonary embolism. If it goes to your heart, you'll have a heart attack. And if it goes to your brain, you'll have a stroke. Yes, ma'am, right here. 
So the, do the lemons have the same effect as a grapefruit? Because they do not. Grapefruit. Listen, I need you to understand what God does. He purposely makes things in a way that are more challenging. The things that are very healthful for you are the things you probably don't like too much. I know people that do not like to eat salad. But I also know what kind of health issues they're going to have because they don't like to eat salad. Because every, every sickness is nutrient related. So here I have some things that I brought. This here is what's called calm and it's magnesium citrate. It's a supplement if to help bring in more magnesium. This one here is what I've taken a lot of in the last few days because I, I think I probably took 30,000 of this to, in the last 24 hours, which is vitamin C crystals. And I drink it in, in the morning. Um, it's good to get your lemons, but sometimes you have to get things concentrated. This comes from a company um, called Isogenics, and it is called Amped. It's a, it's a dietary support. It helps with hydration. Um, there's another one here. These are two different flavors, I think. One is orange and one is looks blue, so it must be blueberry. And so why am I bringing these different things? Here's another one from, from, from the same company. This one's greens. Now, why is this important? Because if you have this, why would you need this? This is, we're gonna talk about why you should probably be doing this and this simultaneously, because we're gonna talk about that today. This one here is called Ionic Supreme. It's another dietary one which helps with stress. This one here is the one that helps with greens. I'll sit this over here. Um, here's another one, it's called fruits. It is basically uh, the constituents of fruit that have been um, uh, made in such a way that you get more from less. Now here's a couple other things I brought. This one here is oil of oregano. And this is an amazing thing that you can take when you're starting to not feel very well, it is an, a powerful immune booster. And so I, I pulled out all of those things because I wanted to set the stage, okay? I wanted to set the stage because it is exceedingly important for you and I that we learn the lessons we need to learn now about how to recover our own health because that's a major issue that's happening in the world right now. And I'll, I'll, I'll back up and give you a little bit more history, but give me a moment here. I'm just going to go live on, what's the, what's the name of that? Oh yeah, that's them. All right. You can go ahead and hold on to that. All right, for those that are watching online and for those that are joining us here on Facebook, uh, my name is Pastor Smith. And for those that are able, would you bow with me as we pray? Father in heaven, thank you again for the word of God and for your loving kindness. And thank you, Lord, that you considered us even before the foundation of the world, you had a plan to help us. And Lord, as we discuss some of the things that are, that are going on in our world and in our own bodies, especially me, I, I, I can feel and I understand. And so Lord, we just want your help. We want your, not only forgiveness for our sins, but we need your help to restore us. We ask for grace. I ask that you would be with those that are here present, those that are watching online, whether it be Zoom or, or YouTube or Facebook or any other platform that these things may go on. Lord, we have a table of blessings here with us, but they're not blessed unless you bless it. So please bless us by your presence. Open to us the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me. All right. Coming up soon. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. It's amazing to me. Every time I want to teach on health, I have major health issues that will come up. Last night, I was speaking to a group in China and I was blown away. I was expecting Chinese. But they weren't Chinese Chinese. They were African Chinese. And I was blessed tremendously. I was really blessed because they spoke English. Praise the Lord. But, but it was really a blessing. And so I was up and actually I was off on my time. I thought that he said they were 12 hours difference anyway. So, but the Lord really blessed. You know, and then I, I went to lay down to go to bed. And I couldn't sleep. There was something that was going on in my system. I began to cough and some other different things. So I got up. And um, I think I took some vitamin C. I, or no, I sat in the tub. Yeah, I took some vitamin C and I sat in the tub and I sat there for a while to let my body. Because you know that we talked about water last week. You know that you can use water to transfer things. If you want cold and you need your body to, to receive the benefits of cold, you can sit in a tub of water. And I know people that do ice baths. Now, some of us shudder at the thought, but I need you to understand something. If you want to lose weight, you want to lose what? Weight, ice baths are exceedingly beneficial because you know what it does? It activates a kind of fat that you have in your body called brown fat. What's a, what, kind of, what kind of fat is it? Brown fat. So there's a difference between white fat and brown fat. This is not racism. It's, it's biology and brown fat is the kind of fat that's activated. If your body is put into a cold area, it has energy stores in it and it releases the energy to give you the ability to live. If you fall into some cold water or something, brown fat, and you can activate brown fat by taking cold showers. This is one of the things that happens. And so, but if you want to transfer, if you want heat, you can get in hot water. Many of us have sat in a hot tub or something like that before. A hot shower. There are different ways. But today, oh, oh I, I, I apologize. We were talking about these guest speakers that are going to be coming. I've been teaching on medical ministry this summer. We have more people that are coming. Dr. Anthony Corns will be here at the end of the month. He'll be coming. And I'm really looking forward to him, him coming. He, he's been a real blessing to me, both spiritually and health-wise. Uh, Pastor David Perch will be here um, in the month of August. Uh, I just spoke with him yesterday. And Maimon Wilson, I just spoke with him the other day, and he will be here also this summer. We're working out the dates, but these three men are going to be here at our little church and some others that we have on the horizon. All right, again, I'm Pastor Smith. And today we are discussing about energy but not any kind of energy, a special kind of energy, heavenly energy. Heavenly energy. Now, all energy comes from God because God created all things. But the Lord wants to give you the strength and energy that you need to do the things he's called you to do. And so this is a part of the faith of Jesus that many don't receive because the Bible says my people are destroyed from a lack of what? Knowledge. They don't know it. They don't know it. Did you know about brown fat? Many people don't know about brown fat. If you don't know about brown fat, but you think all fat is bad, then you won't know how to activate brown fat. Knowing how to activate the things that God has already done. First, you need to know they exist. And then once you know they exist, you need to know how they operate. And you need these things because that way you can utilize them in your experience. God's people are suffering because they don't know. And many times they don't know. The Bible says we don't know because we just didn't want to know. Oh, man. What pastor going to say? Pastor. Oh, OK, pastor. How come every time I show up to church, you talking about this? 
Now, some ladies say, how come every time I show up to church, you talk about women? Some men say, how come every time I show up to church, you talk about men? I said, and, and some unemployed people, how come every time you're talking about uh, uh, having a business? They all think that, I'm, that me or whoever else the man of God is doing is talking about their thing. But it's not true. God is dealing with all of us. And when you show up, he'll deal with whatever you're dealing with. But today, he wants to talk about health. But previously, we talked about... Last week, we talked about the living water of Christ Jesus specifically. Oops, it's not supposed to be that. I accidentally changed that. It was, it, was the, it was about water and salt. Salt and water. And so that's what we talked about. But today, heavenly energy. Be careful when you're doing the slides. I had to change all of them. But I didn't want to change all of them. I only want to change most all of them. All right. Okay. Do you ever feel weak? You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. All of us are subject to weakness. You know, they say the minute you're born, you're, you're, you're every day you're dying. The Bible says, go with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis in chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I want you to see something, what the Lord said. And I was discussing this with someone recently. In Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to go to verse 16. Because we're talking about weakness. And we're talking about how to have strength, heavenly strength, powerful strength, how to be transformed. Second, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely what? Does anybody in here have a little number next to where it says thou shalt surely die? Does anybody have anything? Does, does it tell you what that word means? It literally means dying thou shalt die. It doesn't mean that day it's going to happen because this is a misunderstanding. Many churches... Reject God's word. Many people because they say, see, they didn't die that day. But that's not what God said. God said, dying thou shalt die. You're going to suffer the pains of death and then you're going to die. We're going to see this more as we go on. See, cancer, diabetes, you know, osteoarthritis, allergies, all of these are a part of the dying thou shalt die part. You ever feel weak? You ever feel weakness in your body? Anybody in here? Your knees aren't the same. Your hips. Whatever it may be, your heart. What about your mind? See, that's the real hard one to deal with. If you had to choose which one you would give up, your body or your mind, which one would you really give up? Which one is really you? It's the mind. You know, if you have to choose between being in a wheelchair, but having your mind fully, well, you know, I, you don't want that choice. But, you know, what's the use of having a, a body that works well, but a mind that doesn't work at all? What about your spiritual things? Do You ever feel weak spiritually? You ever feel like, Lord, I'm not sure I'm going to make it, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Lord, I'm not supposed to be choking people out. Lord, please help me. My friend says, Pastor, you always say the stuff that we think but nobody should say. So today, we'll be looking at what God teaches about strength and energy. All right. So question. Does anybody remember what the needs of the cells are? All right, let's look at it. The cell, life's smallest unit, its first need is oxygen. Did you know how much oxygen you breathe in? When you breathe in? When you breathe in, you take a deep breath. You're only breathing in 21% oxygen. Do you know that? The rest of it is nitrogen and other gases. 
21%. Do you know that when you breathe out, you know how much oxygen you're breathing out? 16%. That's why you can give mouth to mouth and save somebody's life. 16%. And so oxygen is the first need. The second need is water. Every cell needs oxygen. It needs water. The third need is nutrients. Food, that's why we talked about these things here. The fourth need is to remove waste. And the fifth need is to be uh, free from toxins. All right. So here's a man by the name of Dr. Kerry Rings. We had his daughter here, oh man, five years ago now. Right? You were here. Oh, you weren't here when she came, huh? Oh, she, oh you missed it. So Sister, sister, uh, sister, um, sister Betty Reams came. This is her father. His name is Dr. Kerry Reams. And he had something that he, he his, his thing was, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this. Oh, I didn't put the picture in, so I'll tell you now. He, uh, I think he died, was it the 80s or the 90s? Anyway, he was around in the days of Einstein. In the days of who? Einstein. Einstein's the reason why we were able to come up. Oppenheimer was the, the one that made the atomic bomb possible, but it was the theories of Einstein. Einstein had five theories that he published in 1905. When? 1905. And so Dr. Kerry Reams went to, a, went to a lecture by Einstein. And after Einstein was explaining that there is a lot of energy, a lot of energy in the cells, not the cells, excuse me, in the atoms. He said, there's a lot of energy in the atoms. And he talked about how we can split the atom and release all of that energy. Well, Dr. Dr. Reams, he had a, he had a problem. He, he said, well, you know, he was seven day Adventist. I don't know if he was one at that time, but he's very inquisitive. He said, well, we're good at breaking stuff. They hadn't made the atomic bomb yet, but they were gonna. They had the, the understanding of it. He said, we're good at breaking stuff. We're good at releasing things. He said, how do I put it? How do we put it back? And Einstein looked at him and said, sir, I will leave you to answer that question. So Dr. Reams left and he, you know, he started a, he started a business because he's a scientist. He started a business in agriculture. He said, we often through our farming, we take a lot of, we take a lot of nutrients out of the cell. Every time you grow, you ever known a lady that's had a lot of children? Anybody here know women that's had a lot of children? You ever notice some of the health issues they might have? Because every time they have a child, that child pulls because her body's going to give the child all of her nutrients that she has. And if she's not eating it or if she doesn't have it, it's going to pull it out of her system. So all the calcium the child needs, all the iron, all of the other nutrients, they all get pulled. My little brother was this, the eighth child. And my little brother, he had problem with his teeth because my mom lacked enough phytocalcium. Calcium from, uh, you know, not from a tree, you don't, you know, but, but organic calcium. And so what Dr. Reams did was he said, let's start working with the soil to make sure that the soil has all the nutrients that it needs. And let's see what will happen if we take the seeds that God has given us and we plant them in the soil. And this is what happened. He grew corn that he is probably, I think, about six feet. That's about nine not quite 10 foot corn. Well, when I came around in the year 2002, after I decided to become a, uh, I asked the Lord, what job do you want me to, not a job. I said, what, what trade do you want me to have, Lord? All the men of God have a, a trade they can work with their hands. So in case the economy goes down or something, you have something you can trade with, your understanding, your expertise. He said the same one I've been trying to teach you since you were a little boy. And that was my dad wasn't not my dad was in the military, but he was also a gardener. He had a landscaping business, Smitty's Lawn Maintenance. And so I didn't I, I worked the job, but I didn't like the job because, you know, I was as a, I was a, I was a proud. Black little boy. And when you're young and you're black, you know, one of the things you recognize is that people who are lighter skinned get treated better. 
And so, but people who work out in the field get treated differently than people who work in the house. And I wanted to work in the house. My dad said, you know, my dad wanted me to have the business. And I said, dad, when I get older, I want a job with a secretary and air conditioning. But instead, my dad wanted me to work this. The Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said, the same thing I've trying to teach you since you were a little boy. And that was this. So I met this man here. I don't know if you can see him. His name is Bob Jorgensen. He is five feet, 10 inches tall, almost 5'11". The corn is when you get to the top here, some of them are 12 feet tall. He studied the writings and the, and the things of agriculture of Dr. Kerry Reams, and he began to perfect it so that we grew. This is the corn I grew. I, I planted this corn. I cleared the field. I'll show you the pictures later. And so um, it was a, this, is a, this is a thing because you can only get these things. This is my friend, Sungju. He's from Korea. I planted all of this. You'll see. Now, Sister Meji, you'll, I want you to see something. Do you know what this is right here? You know what that brown stuff is? That tan stuff? That is a big roll of straw or hay that we laid down between the rows and all the corn and all the agriculture so that we never had to pull up weeds. Never had to pull weeds. And it kept, it was like putting, it was like putting a band-aid on. Can you go find our son? Where, oh, I see him, I see him. And so it's like having a band-aid on. It kept the moisture in. And we grew this right here. Um, this is what we call lady fingers or okra. That's what this is. But we grew that corn in this soil. And so my question here is, were we always this weak? Was, was, human, was mankind always this weak? Look what the Bible says. Well, look what the Bible teaches. So the first 10 generations before the flood, the men lived to be about 900. The average age was 912 years. Seth was 912. Noah, 950. Uh, but Methuselah, he lived almost 970 years. But after the flood, men changed their diet and something else more important happened. Not only there was a corresponding change of diet and then something else happened. It used to be that above the earth was a layer of water. This is why we got the oceans we have, because that that water that's on the earth now used to be in the sky. And it used to prevent cosmic radiation. They didn't have to wear UV sunglasses. They didn't have to not only have that, but the rays from the sun weren't able to penetrate and hit them. And guess what? You know what happens when, you know what one of the reasons why things grow better in a greenhouse? Is because the sun rays that are damaging cannot penetrate and hit, hit the plant. So the plant doesn't have to spend most of its energy on healing from damage caused by the sun. So it can put more of its energy in producing growth and fruit. And so this is what happened. And then this is where we are today. Ankle biters. You know how some of us don't like chihuahuas and those little dogs that go, yep, 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 yep. But we are the chihuahuas of humanity. We're the pugs. Some people like pugs because, you know, they say, oh, he's so ugly, so cute. I don't know. Snores like an like a overweight man because that nose is all smashed up. But, you know, that's another thing. So watch this. The earth has become weak. Look what the Bible says here. Isaiah 51, verse 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall do what, everyone? Vanish away like what? Smoke. And the earth shall do what? Wax old like a what, everyone? A garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be for how long? Forever. And my righteousness shall not be abolished. Which means... That my salvation and my righteousness have energy and power that never end. But what happens to the earth? 
See, the, the heavens are going to vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax old like a what? Now, I've had my favorite garment. I have my favorite sweater. Oh, man, I wore this sweater all the time. As a matter of fact, you can't tell every Christmas time we would go visit family and I would wear this green sweater. I wore that sweater so much that it that it ended up being what's called threadbare. You couldn't do anything more with that sweater. It's just like the girl in the book, A Thousand Shall Fall. And she had that little, little Susie. She had that little red sweater and she always wore it. And then, well, she, she had it. And then one day it disappeared and she cried. And then the next thing you know, for Christmas, she got it. And they had taken the sweater and made doll's clothes out of it because it became threadbare. <coughs> so I want to show you something. This is an apple in the year 1950 that was tested. And they tested it. And it had 4.3 milligrams of iron in that one apple. 50 years later, almost, they tested apples, same, same region, and it had 0.18 milligrams of iron. Which means, listen, some of us don't even like to eat apples or fruit or other things like this. We're not even getting this. But this right here, in order to get the same nutrition from this one apple, you would have to eat 26 apples. Yeah, it sounds, you like apples, huh, Shepard? I know you do. But here's my point. What happened? The soil has been depleted and it's getting depleted. That's what it says. The earth is waxing old like a garment. They used to do experiments. Dr. Kerry Reams, he did experiments on tomatoes. And he went to one farmer and he bought tomatoes and it had one, it had 1900 parts of iron or was iron. Yes. Of iron per tomato, 1900 parts. You eat one. And then he went to another farmer's market, another farm just a few miles away. And when he, and when he got it, he tested it. It had one part of iron. So in order to get the same nutrition, so all of them don't have the same nutrition, in order to get the same nutrition as the one that had 1,900, how many would you have to, have to eat? You'd have to eat 1,900 tomatoes. I was watching a video the other day of a man and he was talking about how, how they had, had, had repair, repaired the soil where they were growing cherry tomatoes and the cherry tomatoes were this size. Cherry tomatoes. Many of us go to the store and you buy a tomato like this on the vine. That's a new thing now. They, they give it to you on the vine and they charge you four times the price. They call them hot house. Those should be hot pocket. That's because that's what's happening to your wallet when you buy them. Listen, it's amazing to me what they charge for food now. It used to be people had an idea that, you know what, I'm not paying all this money. Listen, my wife is like, look, I'm going to grow me some tomatoes. I'm not during the summertime. She's like, I'm going to grow some stuff because I'm not paying all them crazy prices if I don't have to. Am I wrong? And she says it tastes better. It tastes better because it don't cost nothing. <laughs> but it also tastes better, yes. All right. So here's a principle that I found. If the soil is sick, guess what? The plants are going to be sick. And if the plants are sick, guess what? The people are going to be sick. And so you have sick soil, therefore you'll have sick plants and you'll have sick people. Man has become weak. Spiritually weak. Watch this Hebrews 11 verse 1, 1 verse 11. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth the what every one? So wait a second, you thought that was just Isaiah that said it. But no, Paul agrees. Watch this. They become mentally weak. Look what the Bible says. Psalms 102. David says. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a what? A garment as a vesture shalt thou change them and they shall be changed. You know, what's powerful. God says he can change us. Like clothing. 
He can give us strength and power or he can take away our strength and power. Which one do you want? Okay. Physically weak. What about physically weak? I think we read this one already. Isaiah 50 verse 9, this one here. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as doth a garment. The moth shall eat them up. But you know what? He's like, it's not going to eat me up, though. It's going to eat them. So man has lost his power, brothers and sisters. That's women, too, because women came from where? What, anybody know where women came from? Raise your hand if you know where women came from. Who came first? The woman or the man? Her name is woman, not because when Adam saw her, he said, whoa, ho, ho, man. That's not what happened. That's what we do sometimes. But no, he said woman because she was taken out of man. It cost him something. All right. Sick soil, sick plants equals sick people. All right. So here is a chart. And this says foodborne minerals. So we're talking about nutrition here. And so you'll see here is phosphorus and selenium and copper and magnesium and cobalt and calcium and zinc and iron. You see that, right? And you'll notice that from 19, so 123 years ago, when they tested it, this is what was in the soil. It was still really low. But you know what happened? In the 19, late 20s and the 1930s, they began mechanized farming. They started using machines. And when they started using machines, all of a sudden the nutrition level started to do what? Go down. And watch this. Then they said, oh, the, the nutrition levels are going down. And so they started having problems with the plants and, and, and sickness and, and illness with the plants. And so they started adding, them, adding ammonium nitrate to try, try to help the plants. Right? Try to give them some nitrogen. And then they said, oh, that's not working enough. So now our plants are getting really sick. That's the 1950s. The 1960s, they said, you know what? Our plants are so sick, we need to spray them with things. So they started spraying with herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. But you know what's happening? Then in the, in the, in the, um, in the around 2000, just before 2000, they started spraying it with, what, with the GMO, the gly uh, glyphosate which most of us have in our bodies right now. But look at this. As these nutrients are going downhill, look what's going up. You see these lines right here that were really low? <coughs> Excuse me. Cancer was almost unheard of. Obesity, almost unheard of. Asthma, almost unheard of. It says... Uh, I don't know what that's. Bone deformity is almost unheard of. Heart conditions, almost unheard of. Arthritis, almost unheard of. But look at where they are now, and we're way past this now. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the Bible says in Isaiah 51, verse 6, lift up, thine eye, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. This is God commanding us. He says, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. What's going to happen to the heavens? Can God lie? Because he can't lie, because his word is with power. He says, I want you to look at the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the stars. All of them are going to vanish away like what? Smoke one day. And he says, and the earth is going to wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein are going to die how? We're not going to die suddenly. We're not going to die suddenly. That's how Moses died. Moses died at 120 years old. He died suddenly. He laid down and died. You know, there are some who that God allows, but the majority of us are going to degenerate. Because we're lacking in nutrients. And it's not a problem that is just one generation. It's several generations have been lacking and they pass it on from parent to child. To grandchild. All right. 
Question. What was her strength? Speaking about the earth, what was her strength? Look at this. God endowed man with so great vital force that he has withstood the accumulation of disease brought upon the race and consequence of what? Perverted habits has continued for how long, brother? We talked about this morning on the way to church, right? Has continued for how long? 6,000 years. This fact of itself is enough to evidence to us the strength and what else? Electrical energy that God gave to man at his creation. It took more than 2,000 years of crime and indulgence of base passions. Listen, they were wicked. And the first 2,000 years, man committed crime and it didn't look like it was going to affect him at all. It's just the same way many of us have this thing. Look, I've been, I've been drinking beer for 20 years and I ain't had a problem. I've been smoking cigars or cigarettes for however long and I've never had a problem. But then one day, there's a change. And when that change comes, there is no going back. I'll show you what it looks like. Watch this. I call it the health pyramid. The what kind of pyramid? Now, this is a scary mountain. See here, in this health pyramid, this is you. And I'm going to show you what this normally represents. This is normally the first 40 years of your life. Not everybody gets 40. And then this is normally the last 40 years of your life. And there is a peak that happens. And what happens is this. People live how they want to live, doing what they want to do, and they don't normally see. You'll see young people, they'll stay up all night, they'll drink, they'll do drugs, they'll do meth, they'll do coke, they'll do all, they'll smoke weed, they'll do all these things for years and years, and then one day, you know, they, they just kept going, you know. They started off where, you know, all they just did was this, and then 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 one day, boom. And then you know what ne happened next? And down here is death. See, they get over here, and now they'll have a degener de degenerative disease. Now they're going to have, oh, this is when they have, oh, the arthritis that doesn't go away. Now they got their psoriasis, a skin disease that doesn't go away. Now they got toenail fungus that they live with for the rest of their lives. Now they have back issues and other kind of issues. Over here, that first 40 years, they were living good. But they did not understand that you reap what you what? We all do. And then when they get here, most people spend the first 40 years of their life, you know what they're trying to get? They spend that first 40 years, I learned this from Thomas Jackson, they spend that first 40 years trying to make some money. People will use their bodies to make money. Oh, I don't have anything else. I'm going to use my body. I'm going to use my strength. And, they, and they, you know, maybe they'll play football or, or maybe they'll do something else. You know that many of these professional athletes, especially those that play football, they end up getting these brain injuries from getting hit so many times that they end up losing it. And some of them, the pain and the difficulty, they just take their life. It happens with other sports as well. And so they'll spend the first 40 years trying to make that money and then they'll spend the next 40 years and all that money they'll spend it trying to get their health back but the lord is teaching you and i that he wants to give us our health back redeeming the time the scripture says because the days are easy or evil all right and so it's he this says here if adam at his creation had not been endowed with 20 times as much vital force as men now have the race with their present habits of living in violation of natural law would have become what everyone? What's that word right there? Extinct. Imagine if your great grandparents live like your brothers and sisters. I won't say you. Lives like people that you know. Imagine if they drank alcohol like people drink now or smoke like people smoke now. 
or, or, or disobey all the laws of health as they do now. At the time of Christ's first advent, the race had degenerated so rapidly <coughs> that an accumulation of disease pressed upon that generation, bringing in a tide of what? Woe and a weight of misery inexpressible. So vital force, we found out, equals two things. It equals strength and what else? Electrical energy. But do you know, anybody here like fireworks this, week, this last week on 4th of July? Many of you probably didn't. I did. Do you want to know which one are the, the best fireworks? The ones that are heavy or the ones that are light? Heavy, Why? Because they have, the, they have more weight. They have more grams. They'll say 500 grams or whatever it is. The more weight. Listen to me. The reason why we used to be bigger is because we had more nutrients in us. More iron, more selenium, more copper. We had the ability to have more electrical energy. That's why these men were so big and why they lived so long. And one of the reasons we don't live as long is because we're not as big. Normally people who get a very, uh, uh, you know, a stage three or stage four cancer diagnosis, if they're very slight and skinny, they don't last as long as the one that's overweight. Did you know that? The violation of physical law and the consequence human suffering have so long prevailed that men and women look upon the present state of sickness, suffering, debility, and premature death as the appointed lot of humanity, people think this is just how it's supposed to be. Man came from the hand of his creator, perfect and beautiful in form, and so filled with vital force that it was more than a thousand years before his corrupt appetites and passions and general violations of physical law were sensibly felt upon the race. More recent generations have felt the pressure of infirmity and disease still more rapidly and heavily with every generation. The vital forces have been greatly weakened by the indulgence of what, everyone? Appetite and lustful passion. See, people think, how come I can't eat what I want? The Lord, I don't know why I can't, why can't I have that cheese? That cheese is good, that cheese tastes great. Listen, I love chicken. Listen, my favorite food, my favorite food, fried chicken, I'm black. I ain't afraid of it. I love fried chicken. I stopped eating fried chicken 25 years ago, even though I grew up. It was, listen, I had chickens for years because I realized after I stopped eating them for a while, how wicked we are treating those, those poor birds. Can't wait to just rip her breast off and eat it. Can't wait to just rip her leg off and eat it. Can't wait to suck on the, the, the meat in her neck. Oh, because it's, it's wickedness. And I had chickens for a long time because when we were out in the country, I had chickens because I said, you know what? These chickens are going to be safe in my house. My two dogs, my, my black lab and my beagle that we had at the time, our two dogs, I trained them. Listen, we don't eat chicken. And my dog looked at me, you don't eat chicken. I said, no, Negro, because he's black. No, Negro, we don't eat chicken. And he looked at me, because I showed him one of the baby chickens. I did like this. I, I, took the, I took the little chick when I had him. I got him, you know, I got him and they were still little babies. And I took him and I showed him. He said, oh, went to eat. I said, hey, we don't eat our friends. You understand? You know, that, you know it's a mental thing you can do. Listen. Let's, men, if you got a struggle when you look at ladies, you look at them, you look at them all lustful and like, oh, look, she fine. Oh, look at her. She look good. You know how to fix that? What you do is, is you imagine that lady is your sister. And you look at her now like, ugh, I don't care how good she looks. See, it's a mental thing. I taught the dogs, listen, we don't do it. And our dogs... The chickens, we got up, the chickens, we had 13. I got a few more as eggs. And then uh, well, they laid some, and we ended up almost 40 chickens running around the house. And the dogs, I brought them in with me into the kennel or into the little chicken coop. And I said, them sit while I picked up the chickens. And the chickens walked around, and they looked at me like, I can't eat none. You can't eat none. Why? Because they weren't made for food. 
you're, they're allowed to eat them, but that's not God's original intent. And so the vital forces have been greatly weakened by the indulgence of what everyone? Appetite and lustful passion. If you have problems in your life, listen, if you have some spiritual problems, it may be that God left you because you won't stop killing and eating his animals. You want to change. Now, I'm not saying everybody who's a vegan is spiritual. There are some wicked people. Adolf Hitler was a vegan. But we don't put him on a poster saying, let's be like Adolf. People don't even name their children Adolf. But what I am saying is, is that God will give you strength and power when you do what he said do because you believe what he said. The patriarchs from Adam to Noah, but with but few exceptions, lived nearly a thousand years. Since the days of Noah, the length of life has been tapering. Those suffering with disease were brought to Christ from every city, town and village for him to heal. For they were afflicted with all manner of diseases. And disease has been steadily on the what everyone decrease, right? You know, because people are living longer, but they're living longer, sicker. Through successive generations since that period, because of the continued violation of the laws of life, mortality, that's death, has increased to a fearful extent. The years of man have been what, everyone? Shortened so that the present generation passed to the grave even before the age which the generations that lived in the first few thousand years after the creation came upon the stage of action. Meaning we die before they became teenagers. They live in 900 years. A teenager is going to be what? 200, 300 years old. The disease has been transmitted from who, everyone? Parents to children from generation to generation. Infants in the cradle are miserably afflicted because of the sins of their parents, which have lessened their what, everyone? Vital force. Their wrong habits of eating and dressing. They're eating in what? Now, this is not just now talking about it. Listen, how you dress can affect your health. Ask anybody who has heart problems now, but they used to love short sleeves and short pants. The blood cools. And he says, their wrong habits of eating and dressing and their general dissipation are transmitted as an inheritance to their children. Many are born, what's that word right there? Insane. And what's that one? Deformed and blind and deaf. And a very large class are deficient where? You know what you call deficient in intellect? Stupid. Sometimes we, my mom used to say, are you stupid or something? And I'm like, I got it honestly. It's not my fault. You and daddy did that to me. We can't get at our children because like, oh, how can you be so dumb? Which is so funny because that that word dumb, if you use it as the less intellect shows that you don't have intellect because the word dumb literally means you can't hear. So can't speak. Thank you so much. Now I sound dumb. The strange absence of principle which characterizes this generation and which is shown in their disregard of the laws of life and health is astonishing. What's this word right here? Ignorance prevails upon this subject while light is shining all around them. With the majority, their principal anxiety is, what shall I do what? Relationships are all, when people get together, it's all about what we're going to eat. What shall I eat? And what shall I drink? And wherewithal shall I be clothed? Notwithstanding all that is said and written in regard to how we should treat our bodies, appetite is the great law which governs men and women generally. So, how do we fix this problem? Specifically, thank you so much, this power problem. How do we fix it? So we had these things, so the capability is in us. But look at what the Lord says, Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power after that. What happens? The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. See, Whenever God wants to empower something, he gives his spirit. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Let's, let's see if this is true. Whenever God wants to empower something, 
He brings his spirit. His spirit is made mention of. And watch this. Genesis chapter one, verse one and two. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God did what everyone moved upon the what face of the waters. Listen to me. God gave power to the things of nature. Specifically, it talks about the water. See, listen, I talked about this the last two weeks about healing with water. Water is one of the most powerful means of healing. Why? Because you can take water and you can add lemon to it and make it more powerful. You can take water and you can add a green drink to it. Oh, that was fruit. A green drink to it and make it more powerful. Because water will take these things and it, it will carry it in. All right. So what is their strength? I'm going to move past this. So vital force is the strength that God gave to men and women. And it equals two things, strength and electrical energy. This is very important. So I want you to see something. Is there in the Bible? It talks about the hundredfold. This is in the book of Matthew. Go with me to Matthew 13, please. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus spoke about this principle, but many have not paid attention or have not seen it, have not looked deeper than the surface. Matthew chapter 13. When he talks about the sermon by the seed, the sower, the seed in the soils. When he talks about that thing, when he talks about it, he says at the end, he says there was. At the end, you'll see if you'll drop down to verse eight, but other fell into good ground. What kind of ground? Good ground and and brought forth fruit, some in hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. So now watch. There were two kinds of soils. Actually, there were there was the good and there was the bad. The stony ground, the, the thorns and the wayside. Yes. And then you had the other side with the other three and it was the good soil, but they had varying degrees of goodness. And some was a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. But watch this now. This man here, Robert Bright, I found this article that he wrote on November 12th, 2008. So I'm not trying to take his work. And when I was studying because I'm a biological farmer, I was talking about um, CECs, which is cationic exchange capacity, which is something you don't need to know about. But it talks about the, the soil's ability to hold nutrients. How much can it exchange with the plant? So the plant can have all the power that it needs. And so, because Jesus talked about it. And so we did the, I've showed you before the paper experiment. Everybody here done the paper experiment with me? All right, you have your bulletin. You have your bulletin. And you just take it and you fold it twice. Okay. You fold it in half. If you, if you, if how many pieces would you now have? It's now two. You fold it again. How many do you have now? Four. You fold it again. How many do you have now? Eight. Why? Because every time you fold it, it doubles. That's what it means to fold something. It's to double it. So the one of the principles here. So if you do it 27 more times so that you get a total of 30, what number do you have? Look at this. You have 1,073,701,824. That's what you will have if you folded it. And this is the least of the promises of blessing that God wants to give you. A 30 fold blessing. If your heart is open to receive the strength the wisdom so that God can strengthen you in the inner man. He can restore your heart. He can restore your body. The only reason he can't restore it, the Bible says, is because of unbelief. Hebrews chapter three and four. <clears throat> what happens if you want to do 60 fold? You double that. Now, our last number was one billion, uh, seventy three million, seven hundred one thousand eight hundred twenty four. Look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. When you double that, when you get to this, you will end up with one quintillion, one hundred and fifty one quadrillion, 
973 trillion, 21 billion, 73 million, 889,216, which is slightly more than double 34. See, listen, that's the, that's, that is second place. Third place was the 1 billion. And this is, this is in percentage. All right. What about 100 fold? Watch this. This is the number. You couldn't count this number if you started with one from the time you were born to the time you died. You couldn't count this number your entire life. One non-nillion, 201 octillion, 64 septillion, 595 sextillion, 207 quintillion, 167 quadrillion, 685 trillion, 882 billion, 431 million, 343,619. Now let me give you a Bible for this. Go with me in your Bible. If you went to the book of Genesis chapter 26. See, some of us are thinking... Well, the word of God, I, I see what he says, but he doesn't mean me. Genesis 26. Go with me to Genesis 26. I want, you to, I want to show you something in Genesis 26. Okay. The Bible says in Genesis 26, speaking about Isaac. Oops, I'm in, no wonder I'm looking in Genesis 25. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Genesis 26. Father, hold on one second. thought it was. Oh, yes, that's it. Thank you so much. I was thinking it was 11. I didn't see it. Thank you so much. Okay. Speaking about Isaac. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Isaac did what? He planted a garden. I want, to see, I want you to see what God will do for you if you will just do the things he asked you. And Isaac sowed in the land, in that land, and received in the same year a what, everyone? Anybody there? This is what Isaac got. For every one seed or plant that Isaac planted, this is what he got from it. From it. Does the Holy Spirit lie? See, when they said it took two men to carry one bunch of grapes, did it take two men? Did the grapes look like watermelon? I want you to understand. See, God has this strength and energy and he just wants to give it to you. He wants you to have it. It's a gift. But sometimes he needs to wait until you're almost dead before you, you'll receive it. Because you know what? We hard headed. I said we, not you. Hard headed. Abraham, the father of the faithful, God had to wait till he was 99 years old. And the Bible says he he was well nigh dead. Before God revealed his word, his power until Abraham lived a whole number, 176 years longer. And not only that, he he got strength to have one child with Sarah. Sarah had one child, Abraham, after she died 37 years later, at, after having Isaac, Abraham married again. This woman, oh, man. He had like five, six more children. Because God gave him strength. God gave him power. It's a gift. This is that field I showed you earlier. This is me working in the farm. This is our potatoes that we planted. This is those rolls that we got. There were old hay, old straw that we would get that sat in the field and we would go to older neighbors and say, hey, what you going to do with that? They can't feed it to their cows because it, they can't feed the cows aren't going to eat it. So you may take that off your hands for you. So we loaded them up in the back of our dump truck. We loaded them over and we brought them all here. We had big piles of them. This is just some of them. And then and so, you know, what ended up happening the day I was working with the farmer. He said, and we had a rock pile back here. He said, 
I, we, we got somebody else to come work with us. I used to be so close with the farmer. Every day we worked together, I was so happy. Then one day he said, I need you to go work in the field by yourself. I was like, what? I was all sad and hurt. What you mean I got to go work by myself? He's like, I've been working with you for a while. You know what to do. I want you to go over there. I want you to pick up all the rocks in that field that's as big as your fist. And I'm over there picking up rocks. Like, I was just picking up the rocks. I didn't come here. I, learned, I came here to learn how to farm. I had an attitude. And while I was having my attitude picking up them rocks, the Lord said, this field is your heart and those rocks are your defects. Y'all see a lot of rocks in here? Pastor got problems. Y'all think you got problems? The Lord told me, I'm going to show you my problems. So then I was done. Oh, man, I, I, I picked up. Oh, I picked up as many rocks. I, got, I, went, I went down even smaller. I said, I, I need to get the little ones, too. I picked up those rocks. I cleared that field. And I picked up. These are all the rocks I picked up myself that year. He said, the farmer said, you picked up more rocks out of this one field than I picked up in all of our fields in 30 years. That's because I was motivated because the Lord said those rocks were my defects and I wanted to get rid of them quick as possible. And so that's what I did. And so then we planted that corn. That's the corn. That's the field I planted. All of this I planted. That's me weed eating with the farmer. I think his wife was taking the picture that day. And so again, there you have it. Dr. Kerry Reams, Bob Jorgensen, and what happens when you grow? Sung Joon, who's from Korea, one of the best flute players ever, ever known. And so this is us here. All right. See, God wants to give you a fullness of blessing as we prepare to bring this to a close. God's word is with power. It's not in show. It's not in all flashiness. It's with power, real power. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 10. I want you to catch this now. If God calls you to something, God has something for you to do. Acts chapter 10. We're going to go to verse 37 and 38. Acts chapter 10, 37 and 38. And I want you to catch this now. See, some of us are suffering because of bad decisions we made. And the Lord may not remove all of the consequences of those bad decisions. You know, you might be short, like I'm short. My family comes from the six finger family, like, like the Philistines, like Goliath, the sons of Anak. I come from the giant family. You know, though, you know, all of them were black, right? You know, black people always talk about stuff. We don't talk about the fact that we fought against God's people for a thousand years. Anyway, they don't talk about that on Black Family Day or whatever it is. You're in Acts chapter 10, verse 37. Look what the Bible says. <coughs> verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say, you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with hope, with the Holy ghost and with what else? Everyone power. power who went about doing what good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And so God wants to give us the fullness of blessings. We already talked about the fold. I'm not going to go through this. There are different kinds of folds. There's a sheep fold and there are folds for your sheep. Uh, and so a fold can be this here. This is what a fold looks like. The sheep go inside and, and then, and then the, 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 the shepherd normally sleeps right here at the door so that no wolves or anything can get in. It's a gathering place. There's another one. That's a sheep fold. A gathering place. That's another one. You see the, he goes to sleep there. A gathering place. Oh, there's one. It's a gathering place. That's a place where fold is where God wants to give power. That's a gathering place. Oh, there's another one. Getting ready to put those things out. Where's that young man at? He in there is not in here. This is Daniel. Not that long ago. It's a gathering place. 
Some of the people aren't here anymore. It's a gathering place. This young man, we're doing Bible studies this afternoon. It's a gathering place where God wants to give you power. What else is a fold? All right, I've done this, so we'll move, okay? And so, Lord, watch this. Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What's that word? Hypocrites. For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him two what? Two for more child of hell than yourselves. Ecclesiastes 4.12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly what? Broken. Second, Second Samuel 12.2. 12, 12.6. 12, and he shall restore the lamb. How, how often? Fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Proverbs 6.31. But if he be found, he shall restore how much? Sevenfold. And he shall give all the substance of his house. See, a fold is how much it's, it is. How many times you fold is a magnification or a multiplying. And so we've already gone through this part. And so why did I bring this up for us saints? What does this have to do with health? It may be. You haven't been eating much of these lately. You want to go to Mechie's house and pick some lamb's quarter. Because you know it doesn't have herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides on it. That's good. But you know it's better than not having poisons on your food? You know what's better? It's having nutrition in your food. If you had to choose between eating food that had been sprayed with poisons or eating food that was organic but didn't have as much nutrition, which one would you choose? Raise your hand. Where's the microphone? I need you to raise your hand. I need somebody to give me an answer. Which one would you choose? You, would you choose the one with less nutrition? But it's been sprayed? Or would you choose the one with more nutrition? Sorry, less nutrition, not sprayed. Excuse me. And this one is more nutrition. But it has been sprayed. Yes, go ahead. Depends yes. what it's sprayed with and how much less nutrition is in the food that was organically grown. So he said it depends. If it's, a, if it's a equivalent, it's a wash then, right? Mm hmm So now, let me tell you how God designed our bodies. Our bodies, anybody else? Anybody else want to share? You want to share? Go ahead, right here in the front. She let me pick on her. I haven't seen her in a while, so it's, it's okay. With girls, it's always a committee. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we have opposite opinions, I guess. I was going to say more nutrition and just wash it and wash it and pray over it. You know, pray the Lord to clean it. You know, you can drink the poison and it won't harm you, but hopefully you get the good nutrients out of it. I would rather do less nutrition because you still get a little nutrition. All right. So let me, let me show you what God teaches, okay? Our bodies were created with an ability to be able to handle poisons and toxins. Did you know that? What does the body do when you have poisons and toxins in the system? Anybody remember what the needs of the cells are? What it will do is it will take the poisons and toxins and often put it into the fat cells. So the white fat cells normally hold poisons and toxins. That's why when you begin to lose weight, sometimes you'll feel sick because it's those toxins are being released. And then when it's safe to get rid of them, the body can often get rid of them. Our problem is not that, but the body does not have the ability to turn something 
with less nutrition into something with more nutrition. And if the cells need nutrition, if that's what they need, then which one do you think Christ would pick? Listen, the, the entire book of, written, by Prover, written by Solomon is talking about this one principle. He said, you and I need to discern between what's better and what's worse. Better is a poor man with his integrity than a thief, right? Better is a wicked man with a servant than a poor man without one or something along that line. Yes, ma'am. I like the way God put it together, not the way men had taken it apart. Yes. But see, here's the problem, and this is what I want to finish off with. Let me see if I can, I can pull this up real quick. I want to show you this, this thing again. I'm going to just show you this chart. Actually... All right, so let me show you this chart again, okay? See, this is where you and I are. These things are really high, but the nutrition in all the foods is where? You see the numbers here? We started off, you know, phosphorus in 1900 was 50 parts per, per milligram, right? But now it's almost negligible. You and I are dying because of a lack of nutrition. Not only do we need to eat copious amounts of fruits and vegetables in their fresh form, but on top of that, that's why we need these things. The reason why we need cell phones and, and the reason why we need all these electronics and, and things to remind us of things is because our minds aren't as good. Adam didn't need a cell phone. You know what he could do? He could, whatever God said to Adam, Adam could tell everybody that he heard it in the voice that God had it, same inflection, everything, just like a tape, re tape recorder. He could remember it, but then sin has destroyed our memory. We're like the walking dead because the dead know not. They have no more memory. And so God wants to give you blessings to where you have blessings upon blessings in your soil and in every other thing. Sorry, I don't want to go through the questions. We reap what we sow, brothers and sisters, and God wants to give us more. But in order to do so, we have to put some more down into the soil. We have to put more so that we can reap more. And this is what he'll do. We, we're going to have to fight some people. But these, this is the corn we grew. You see how long it is? You see how many kernels on each one? This is not the popcorn we grew. We grew that in sweet corn too. This is a field corn. So... There are laws that restore health, and here they are that you already know. Godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, plenty of rest, lots of water, always temperate and nutrition. These are the laws of health. But they're not just the laws of health. They are God's way of empowering you and I so that we can have life. Whether it be you just learned last week. Anybody remember where to go? You learned about salt. How do you get more water into your cells? It's salt. You take a little of this salt. This is the Celtic sea salt. And you put some on your tongue. You let it dissolve. And you don't put it in the water because it will absorb into the water. And then, but you put it on your tongue. Then it goes in and then it causes your cells, the the. the the magnesium goes into your cells and it's a water hungry molecule and it makes your cells pull in more water. And then guess what? All of a sudden your, your faces, your, your wrinkles and all that other kind of stuff start to disappear more because your body's hydrated. It's a, it's a secret. 
to having power, the power of water. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Some of us will say, but we know these things. But listen, tomorrow I turn 56. Tomorrow. And I, I will have, listen to me, today is a milestone. If I die today, the curse is still active. My natural father and my adoptive father both died at 55, different years apart because they were born different times. They both died at 55 from degenerative diseases. My mom died at 63. But my great uncle, my grandpa died at 90. My great uncle died at 106, 100, I think 106. So I have in me, but you'll see things are going. But, but you know, I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. My dad and both my dads, they, they used to like to drink alcoholic liquor and, and they would, you know, smoke a little bit when they were hanging out with their friends, being cool. And it's, it took years off the end. And when they, when he got cancer, he did the normal treatments. Cut, slash and burn. Surgery, radiation, chemo. And so I'm saying, Lord, I've been begging God, Lord, what do I do? Because I feel some of these things that I that that aren't on me. I my mom smoked most of my life. And because she smoked and she didn't like to be cold. I grew up in a household where I started higher on the list. I didn't get the full 40 years before I got asthma. I was 13. So I started off over here, but because I was generally healthy otherwise. But once I started now, watch this. I was able to go back from here, go back up here by eating healthfully. So for the last 25 years, i have not eating meat on purpose. And it's given me strength in a couple of different ways. First off, it's helped me to control my appetites and passions. Secondly, because I didn't, I was eating these things, plant-based things, then I wasn't having all the poisons and toxins that come from eating meat. T. Colin Campbell says, you want cancer? Eat meat. More than 6%. It's in the book, China Study. Don't be surprised if you get it. He said, that's the recipe. He said, there was no cure. There's no money in eating salad. And so, and so for me, I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord is helping me. So this message is for me as much as for you. See, because I'm counting on his word. So I keep Sabbath. Gives me strength. Plenty of rest. I drink water. I don't drink alcohol. Got power of water. I don't drink or smoke or, or do any of these things. I get that power added. And all these powers are added. And then, you know, I need to exercise more. That'd be great. I go out and get sunshine when I'm exercising, fresh air, open windows, and, and I trust in the Lord. All of these help you and I to push up back so that we can be on the top of the mountain, not going down it. Doesn't matter where you are. If there's breath, there's hope. Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Sometimes we need a miracle, but the miracle really is, is to believe whether that God can do something for you. He can make you more comfortable. I have health issues that never show up because of the grace of God. I used to jump off buildings when I was a little kid. I ended up getting arthritis in both of my knees, but I don't have any arthritis issues. You know why? I'm not doing most of the stuff that will cause it. My joints are still lubricated. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. I want to encourage you because God gave all of this so that he can give you this. He wants to give you power, not a little bit, but heavenly power. He wants you to be like David was fighting Goliath. He's a little ankle biter. Goliath was like, what? He looked at David like he wasn't scared. He took off his helmet. 
I'm about to stomp you down. And David, he went over there. He was quick and nimble, right? You know, because he wasn't even, he, was, he was just careful. He's a, he went over there and he got those five stones and he ran up on them and he's like, right? And, that, and he wasn't singing the song. We sing the song now, but he wasn't singing the song back then. And that stone hit him right in the forehead and the giant fell down and David didn't have a sword. He went over and picked up the man's own sword and held it up. It was so heavy and came down and cut his head right off. See, God has been helping you to defeat giants in your life. But before you can defeat the giant, you've got to deal with the bear and you've got to deal with the lion. That, you know what that bear and lion might be? It might be this right here. Fighting a lion, eating a salad. Fighting a bear, eating a grapefruit, not fruit. Because <laughs> God is calling you, Sister Shinesia. I'm sorry. God is calling all of us. All right. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us. Help us to live to the potential that you desire for us to have. You said that you sent your son that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came that he might show us how to redeem the time for the days are evil, how to buy back our time, how to get more time out of our lives, how to lengthen our lives. By following these simple rules, these simple commands, these simple truths and applying to these eight doctors who will come and make house calls and show us how to be recovered. So, Lord, please help us. I pray, Lord, that you would be with each of us because we are all weak. And you said that your strength is made perfect in weakness and we admit our weakness. And we seek your grace. Help me to be better and to grow. And be with the rest of your people. And I pray these things in Jesus name and for his sake. And the saint said. Amen. God bless. There's a blue and red up here as well. Of you that doing the tithes and the offerings. I wanted to read something from Adventist Home and a part called Systematic Giving for the Family. Let, and let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him. Every member of the family, from the oldest down to the youngest, may take part in this work of benevolence. A plan of systematic benevolence of the tithes and the offerings will prove a safeguard to every family against temptations to spend means for needless things, and especially will it prove a blessing to the rich by guarding them from indulging in extravagances. Every week, the demands of God upon each family are brought to mind by each of its, family, uh, by each of its members fully carrying out the plan, and as they have denied themselves some superfluity in order to have means to put into the treasury, Lessons of value and self-denial for the glory of God have been impressed upon the heart. Once a week, each is brought face to face with the doings of the past week, the income that he might have had if he had been economical, and the means that he does not have because of indulgence. His conscience is reined up, as it were, before God, and either commends or accuses him. He learns that if he retains peace of mind and the favor of God, he must eat and drink and dress to his glory." which goes with what we learned today. Um, if you look at the tithes and the offerings, um, our church offering need is $1,707 a month to um, pay for all the things, the lights, the rent, the insurance, the internet, and all that. Um, last month, uh, we only came to $764.74. So um, that's all 
search our hearts and pray to God and ask for, for help and see if we can all do our part. And um, may God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer. Oh, and also, um, we will take the tithes and offerings in the donation boxes, and then uh, someone will come down the middle at the end. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for, for the, the means that you give us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the lessons that you have given us to learn. And Lord, thank you for the counsel that you give on how to um, do what you would have us to do in order to further your work, Lord. So please, Lord, help us to give where needed and um, help us to um, have a spirit of self-denial that the work may go forward. And Lord, we are so grateful for all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for take, taking care of all of our needs. And we thank you ahead of time. In Jesus' name, amen. Give thee but thine own. Whatever it may be, all that we have is thine alone, I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Amen. We will be doing the...